Boruto chapter 56 review. All right, guys, this chapter right here was absolutely insane. I talked about this a little bit in my spoilers, and I talked about how this chapter right here was going to be a majority of informational based things. And of course, the chapter was exactly that. Now, of course, the first thing I do want to talk about is these brand new cyborgs that's pretty much been taking the Boruto community by absolute storm. What we understand from this chapter is that these cyborgs are actually going to be stronger than Jigen. Back a couple of chapters ago, Jigen actually sold Sasuke and Naruto. So like literally Sasuke actually barely escaped and Karma was telling Naruto to shut up before Jigen actually kills him as well because of course Jigen let Naruto survive and now for these cyborgs to actually be stronger than Jigen could potentially actually solo a prime Naruto and a prime Sasuke not really prime Naruto because we did find out that Naruto had barrier mode but you guys get my gist that right there is absolutely insane and what we do understand is that these characters are also going to have brand new abilities now people's opinions on these cyborgs I think they're very strong people either really really like these cyborgs and people actually really really hate these cyborgs and of course there's going to be those few that's in the middle i personally land in the middle and i want to gain a little bit more information before i actually do give my actual opinions about these cyborgs one of the things that i definitely want to see is these cyborgs actually have the same backstory as like a kawaki for example how kawaki was actually born a human being and then he was actually modified by a model to then become some sort of as katasuke wanted to say a scientific ninja tool i personally think that these cyborgs actually do have a human aspect to them just like a kawaki a lot of the hardcore naruto fans wouldn't necessarily feel so bad about them just being flat out cyborgs whereas if they were actual just full-blown robots i think then a lot of people would have a little bit more problems with them personally i wouldn't necessarily have a lot of problems with these cyborgs if that was the actual case if they do actually have some sort of nuanced battle style for example we're going to talk about this later on in the video how code's fighting style is code is actually one of these quote-unquote cyborgs but code is not necessarily just firing off a bunch of key blasts and not necessarily just overwhelming you with taijutsu and speed like what they do in an anime like dragon ball z i think if these cyborgs have individual distinguishable abilities then i wouldn't necessarily have a lot of problems with it mainly because they would mirror what a shinobi actually is now getting past the personal feelings on these cyborgs another big question is going to be what are their actual will like are they going to be actually joining code what we understand right now is that code is actually out for revenge he's going to be going after naruto sasuke boruto kawaki and amato and kashin koji if he does realize that kashin koji is actually alive but that's besides the point the question is going to be are they going to actually join code now i personally think that they're not all going to join code now this is just a theory of mine this right here specifically is a very big storyline throughout all of the boruto series it's pretty much the free will of these quote-unquote synthetic human beings the first instance of this was of course the mitsuki retrieval arc when mitsuki went quote-unquote rogue and then we understood that synthetic human beings they do act upon their own free will they can't necessarily be programmed to do a certain thing and even in the current times when we do look at the cyborgs that were already created by Amato, kajin koji himself has a specific will which is very very different from delta's specific will and, and that right there in itself is also very very different from code's specific will so once code actually does revive these cyborgs it's not necessarily a 100 percent guarantee that all of them will actually join code's efforts and one of the more important things to look to to actually support this claim is the fact that jigen himself actually did tell amount to dispose of these cyborgs that were actually stronger than jigen mainly because jigen himself didn't actually know if these cyborgs had a different will that was completely different from his own but speaking of these will of these cyborgs we actually did get some information about why code is actually so loyal to each Otsuki. Amato is basically explaining to Naruto that Code thinks of Ishiki Otsuki as a quote unquote god, and, and technically in Naruto terms, Ishiki Otsuki is an actual god. But Code is pretty much one of his more staunch followers. It's like a religion to Code, and because of that, Code is extremely envious of Kawaki because Code himself couldn't necessarily become the vessel for an Otsuki god like Ishiki Otsuki. But later on in the chapter, we actually did get to see Code battle for the first time. Now, I talked about this earlier in the video. I talked about how these cyborgs need to have distinguishable abilities, and Code definitely has. Has that code has something that we haven't necessarily seen before but it kind of mirrors a couple of things that we did actually see before which is kind of interesting now first things first we understand that code actually does have the karma seal which basically makes you faster strong and gives you a whole bunch of other abilities but in this particular chapter right here code didn't necessarily use any of the abilities that the karma seal actually does give you or the ones that we did see before in the past from kawaki and board so instead what code did actually do is this belt jutsu he pretty much laid six different huge belts down on the battlefield and those belts acted as teleportation portals and the other thing that was super important about Code's fighting style is the fact that he does actually have these claws which pretty much makes it easy to stab or impale somebody and that's exactly what he did. The combination of these claws plus the teleportation belts that makes this ability of Code I mean, absolutely insane. It actually seems super overpowered. I mean just thinking about this it basically made me fantasize of Code versus a character like Sasuke who actually does have the ability to teleport as well while using the Renegon. Of course Sasuke doesn't necessarily have the Renegon anymore but hypothetically if Sasuke were to get the Renegon back in the future a 1v1 with Code and Sasuke 
probably be one of my dream fights but i digress from that one of the things that we do have to take into consideration is the fact that this right here could possibly not be code's only ability he is one of those cyborgs that were actually stronger than jigen but jigen actually allowed code to survive because code had this quote-unquote loyalty to jigen as i talked about he basically views ishiki ozuki as like a god now code was actually equipped with a limiter this limiter pretty much suppresses a lot of his powers which now i mean makes him not stronger than jigen in my opinion i think this puts him on the level of like a naruto or sasuke but we do know for a fact that code is actually stronger than delta and boro which is absolutely insane boro not so much but delta actually did give naruto some work while naruto did actually have karma so that right there is super notable some of you guys might have forgot although naruto was actually suppressing his powers naruto was visibly tired while fighting against delta and delta throughout that fight matched naruto's strength wise multiple times but now specifically in the case of code i don't really think his taijutsu is going to be as good which is probably going to be a very good thing for code's character because of course he's a cyborg and i talked about how what i don't want to see is just these cyborgs be super overwhelming speed and strength wise in the boards anime we kind of seen code attack jigen which is like the regular jigen one time and jigen completely disposed of him from that point i kind of thought to myself that code's abilities probably weren't going to center around taijutsu obviously because that right there was such a weak attack so because of this code with the limiter i do want to point out we don't really know exactly what code is going to be without the limiter but code with the limiter is probably not going to be good taijutsu wise which could probably be one way that we could actually defeat code now how code actually got the currency was actually told to us in this particular chapter right here ever since chapter 25 of the boris manga a lot of people understood that there was something weird going on with this quote unquote 15th experiment kawaki was set to be the 14th experiment of course there's the 15th experiment that no one really knew about and now we have it completely figured out code himself was actually the 15th experiment now from what we know i mean you never know potentially jigen actually did experiment on another on another batch of kids but from what we know there were 15 different experiments 13 of them died kawaki actually did get the karma seal he was compatible with the karma seal and he was compatible with being the vessel of jigen however code being the last experiment he was not compatible with jigen or ishiki otsuki but he was compatible with with the karma seal now from what amato said this right here was actually super unique so right now code does have the white karma seal now the white karma seal is set to give code all the good abilities with the karma seal so he basically has the attack abilities with the karma seal but he's not going to actually be a vessel of anybody so as of right now code is in the clear code is not going to be reborn as an otsuzuki member but that does not necessarily make code any less dangerous because as we do know code without the limiter is essentially otsuzuki tier itself now at the very end of the chapter code actually she does pull up to one of the cyborgs now code actually does say that this person is actually like the knower of everything something like that which is actually cool in my opinion i think if this person actually does have a lot of information which is the quote unquote knower of everything that pretty much puts more personality to these cyborgs and not make us look at them like robots aka like how we don't look at kawaki we look at kawaki as an actual person and i do want to get to a point where we do actually look at these cyborgs as actual people and not just cyborgs so of course it's going to be a very important thing to give them their own personalities and something unique about all of them not just in terms of battle and also they have to look like actual human beings in my opinion you can't just have people looking like robots and i think this right here was definitely done well with this character right here now her name is going to be ida or ada i have absolutely no idea some of you guys let me know how to pronounce it in the comment section below but regardless i like the cyborg right here i hope she's going to be a very cool character but let me know what you guys think about this chapter in the comment section below there's a whole bunch of other things that did happen in the chapter but i do want to kind of save that for some tertiary videos so of course if you guys didn't make it this far in the video you might as well subscribe because i'm pretty much gonna be talking about this chapter a little bit more but it's been your boy bar b and we out it's a knife